Hey everybody, Ryan here, or Aminar Productions, and welcome to what should be a full version of my Imperial Shuttle comparison. Today we're going to be taking a look at an Imperial Shuttle from 2001, 2005, 2015, and of course, brand new for 2021 here on the furthest right for you guys. Very cool sets, some of them, very uncool sets, some others, and hopefully this video can help you make your purchasing decision if you're maybe trying to buy the new one, or maybe looking at one of the older ones, or maybe just don't want any of them, and you just want to watch this video to be entertained. As usual, with my comparisons, we'll be using the five categories of minifigures, playability, design, value, and MR opinion to determine which set I think is the best out of these four sets. Here, of course, you can share your own opinion in the comments section below. And if you guys enjoy these comparisons, make sure you leave a like on the video. And if you're interested in checking out more, there'll be a playlist on the end screen at the end of this video. Before we get into those categories, though, I do want to go over some general information on each set so that we have the same base of information. Now, the leftmost set here is set 7166, released back in 2001 with 234 pieces and four minifigures. It did retail for $35 at the time, but adjusted for inflation in today's money, that's about $50. Next set in the lineup here is the 7264 Imperial Inspection Set from 2005. It included 10 minifigures with 367 pieces. The build remained largely the same from 2001. However, they did add some extra little bits and bobs, a ton of minifigures, and the set retailed for $15 more than the previous version, coming in at $50 at the time. Time. Adjusted for inflation, that's about $65 in today's money. 2015 brought us what many people would probably agree is the best play scale Imperial Shuttle, and today's comparison video will probably end up showing that as true to most people. The set number for it was 75094. It had the name of Imperial Shuttle Tiderium. It included five minifigures and retailed for $100 at the time with 937 pieces. Adjusted for inflation, that's about $110 in today's money. And finally, brand new for 2021, we have the 7 5302 Imperial Shuttle retailing for $70 with 660 pieces. The set includes just three minifigs, which is the least minifigs ever in an Imperial Shuttle. Getting into our figures from the first set, of course, from 2001, we had two Royal Guards, an Imperial Officer slash Imperial Shuttle Pilot, and Emperor Palpatine. These figures were probably the worst figure selection out of all four sets, mainly to me because they use yellow for the skin tone and that just straight up isn't accurate. However, it's not a terrible selection of characters. They they just don't really hold up accuracy wise. The Royal Guards are really nice, but the pilot slash officer and Emperor Palpatine just not so great. 2005 set at just $50 included 10 minifigures. If Lego did something like this in a cheaper set today, it would probably be a sign that the apocalypse is about to happen. This just doesn't happen anymore because Lego has been really stingy with minifigures. But in 2005, this was amazing. A awesome figure selection with exclusive stormtroopers that we've never seen since and probably will never see because they changed the whole design of the stormtrooper at this point but the stormtroopers at the time were exclusive because of their leg prints which were very continuous from the torso down to the waist into the legs very very nice stormtroopers for the time probably some of the best ever made and a couple of imperial officers slash shuttle pilots which was nice and then of course the royal guards and of course you couldn't go without the main characters of darth vader and emperor palpatine in the set perhaps the most disappointing figure to me in this set is darth vader with a pretty lack lackluster torso print and no lightsaber but it was 2005 so the torso print is kind of forgivable the no lightsaber a little bit less so just would have been nice to give him a lightsaber but this is the best figure selection out of the imperial shuttles and it's going to be getting the full four points 2015 set also had a excellent minifigure selection this set is a lot closer to being in first place for minifigures than it is for being in third place just to give you some perspective but this is great you have a couple of rebel troopers one of which on the right i believe is supposed to be like the captain rex guy but obviously just not named that in the actual set. So two really nice Endor Rebel Troopers. And you have Princess Leia, who has her really nice uh, kind of camo piece there in cloth. And she does have a waffle in her hand. However, in the actual set, she does have a cookie. So yeah, just so you know. We also have Chewbacca in the center with his bowcaster, and then a very nice looking Endor Han Solo on the right of Chewbacca there. So very, very good minifigure selection for the 2015 set. And that would not be topped in 2021. An Imperial Officer slash Shuttle Pilot Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker are the three figures that are in the 2021 set. Darth Vader doesn't even have arm printing. A lot of people after 2021 would have assumed he would have arm printing. He doesn't. He also uses the harder cape piece and there are softer cape pieces in 2021. And as you'll see with one of the features of this 2021 set, you do have a area where Darth Vader's cape has to be bent. And with that, it's going to stay bent, unfortunately, because they're using the cape piece that is really prone to staying bent and getting damaged in that way. So that's another problem with that, but generally otherwise, a good looking Darth Vader, fine, whatever. Three decently okay minifigures, but hey, at least they got Luke's lightsaber color, right? 
Next up is playability for each of the sets, starting out with 2001. It's pretty straightforward. We have the cockpit, which allows you to take off this front panel piece or windshield piece, and then you have some interior access for a character or two to sit within the cockpit. You have a control panel, and that's pretty nice. Nice and printed on everything there. And then, of course, you can drop the wings down to have it in a bit of a flight mode. The wings don't drop down quite as far as you would want them to, but it does drop down nicely. The issue you have with these earlier shuttles though is that there is no Technic spine for the wing here so it can break off somewhat easily during play. I'm sure if you guys have owned one of these older shuttles or any set that's kind of designed like this without any Technic inner workings there, you've had problems. I guarantee it. On the bottom side you do have landing gear which allows you to land. We'll talk a little bit more about each set's landing gear in the design category. You can drop it on down, you can drop this back flap down, and then you also have a little space on the inside here where you can put in Emperor Palpatine and the two Royal Guards. So this is what they look like on the platform they fit nicely however their capes do have to get bent in some odd ways which is not preferable but you can see if you do fit them in there it fits just fine and of course you can fit all the characters there so that's really all you have for playability on the 2001 set no like spring loaded shooters or anything no flick fire missiles nothing special on anything like that so very bare bones but gets the job done i suppose 2005 shuttle is practically the same as far as playability as the 2001 shuttle with the ability to remove the windshield piece to access the interior for the cockpit to place down your pilot, dropping the wings down. The same problem remains with the main fin of the shuttle where it can break off rather easily. You have the same landing gear and then you can of course pull down this back panel. It's on a slightly different piece, but same thing, same concept. So you can fit the four figures in the shuttle, but of course there's way more figures in this set. And so quite a bit of the playability credit for this set goes to the little extra interior Death Star builds here, as well as the fact that you just have way more minifigures to play around with. I think that's really great. You have this little cart that can drive around inside of the Death Star here with little wrenches in the back, tools and whatnot. You have a big crate, and then you also have a smaller crate, which can be carried by this little crane here built onto this platform. Very, very cool stuff with little seats and everything for your characters. So I think that the figures and these little builds add a ton to the playability of this particular Imperial set versus the 2001 version of the Imperial Shuttle set. 2015 makes several playability improvements. First off, you have some spring-loaded shooters on either side of the Imperial Shuttle, which are able to be shot off pretty easily by pressing in on that white piece in there. You also have much easier cockpit access by just raising up this piece. You can access the two slots for minifigs inside of there, which is very, very nice. Nice and spacious, nice and strong. I don't have any problems with that. You have weapons on the front that can move up and down, which is another good feature, especially for kids. I personally get a little bit bent out of shape with these because, you know, if they're slightly off, it bothers me. But as far as the playability function, that's fine. It's a good thing, I think. And then you can drop down the wings to a perfect 90 degree angle like so on either side and fly the shuttle around. It has a much stronger Technic spine this time around, so you don't have to worry about it breaking during flight, which is a really 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 good thing you also do have landing gear underneath the shuttle which can move out for landing and back on in when you're not landed on top of all of that this shuttle just keeps giving it does have a boarding ramp on the underside of the shuttle now it's not a particularly practical boarding ramp not very useful but it is there which is pretty sweet it does kind of take away from what could have been more like interior space on the inside that you could actually use but it's fine it does work as intended now you can also access that interior like so there's a total of three seats inside you can see them in black there and then you also have that boarding ramp in the middle like i said you can't really use it for anything it's kind of deep in there anyway so i guess it's fine it's a cool feature i think then you also have this little bit here which has some detonators and if one flipped you can see it does have a little print on it so very cool stuff for the 2015 imperial shuttle playability wise but i do think because 2005 has so many figures it's only the second best for playability, so it's only going to get three points. And that leaves us the 2021 model. It also has relatively easy access to this front cockpit by lifting this forward. You can access the area where you can place in one minifigure. That's it on this set. You also do have stud shooters on either side of the cockpit here, which are nice little play features for kids. You do lose the posability of these little cannons at the front, which, you know, might not have been a big deal to you. Certainly wasn't to me, but it is something that is detracted from this model over the last model, but it's a 
positive from the design aspect to me because they stay straight. So bad for playability, better for design in my opinion. The wings of course fold down and you do have the Technic working so you don't have to worry as much about the whole thing falling apart in your hands while you're flying it around. So really good for playability in that way there. And then of course you have little cannons at the back just like the other sets. You can't really open the back although it does feel like you can open it kind of like the 2001 and 2005 set. It's like really wiggly which is odd but that is not what you can do. You actually I'm gonna put the wings up because you have landing gear on the bottom there. That's gonna take care of you. To access the interior on this set, you just push in and lift away for the whole fin assembly on the set. And then you have two little seats in there for Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader to be seated. So this of course can fit all three of your minifigs. And as you can see, it's not super spacious in there, but the access is incredibly easy to just reach in and get the figures or do whatever you wanna do with the inside there compared to the 2015 version where it's a lot tighter and you gotta kind of fit your hand under stuff. And I do prefer this to that. It's just unfortunate that this one uh, isn't as good as the 2015 model as a more general statement there. But yeah, that's definitely thing that this set does well and this one doesn't have too many faults with its playability but it's still only going to get two points into the design category we go and subsequently display these earlier sets are pretty rough for the design i don't think they're necessarily bad for display like they do have that kind of classic tinge to them that makes them kind of worth putting on the shelf and they're not so terribly awful like some of the other earlier lego star wars sets that you wouldn't want to put them on your shelf but they're certainly not a great design by today's standards especially as far as the build quality goes with playability where you have this fin that's going to break off in the regular play with the set that's just a big problem i also don't love the access to the interior although i kind of understand at the time it was probably the best solution to that problem but overall these two earlier shuttles are just really bad compared to the newer ones i will say though that 2001 version is worse in my opinion solely because it uses the older gray lego colors versus the one in 2005 was upgraded to the newer gray lego colors you can see that slight difference in the gray colors here on the video it's very obvious in person maybe not quite so obvious on camera but it is still definitely a thing and for that reason 2001 is the worst design 2005 the second worst design. And before we separate off to the newer two to show you how the rear of the shuttles has kind of changed over the years, you see in 2001, pretty simple. 2005, kind of the same. One of the few changes on these builds was actually this little bit here with the turret on the back moving from up underneath the fin to down on the main like back hatch as a single turret versus the double on the older version. 2015 super upgraded the back end with the thrust coming out of the back there in light blue looks way better but still not perfect because they use light gray underneath which just doesn't show through as well as 2021 which looks way better just using white pieces underneath. So it gives you a really good idea of how things have changed over the years as far as the back of the shuttles and same with the wing design I mean they've added more technic in and whatnot maybe even a little bit of extra detail here in 2015 that we're not seeing in any of the other sets uh still end up with issues especially in the newer sets because they use these pieces the older sets they only really use these but where you see blue kind of coming through with the technic pins and that's present on both newer models just something you don't see on the older models which is nice of the older models but still uh just generally these ones are going to be better and these ones are going to be worse but let's take a look at these two on their own. Two other shuttles, and despite my disdain for 2021's chin, I don't think it's worse than the 2001 or 2005 models as far as the design goes, mostly because of the easy hinge access to both interior sections, both for the front of the cockpit and for the actual like main section of the shuttle here. That's really nice and easy. I also like the wing design a lot. I do think the fin being stronger is really important too on both models respectively, very important, but the 2015 version, I mean, far and away is the better design. And I think that's very obvious when you get down low, low, low like that. I mean, it just looks so much better and more accurate. It's got the correct kind of style for the landing gear, although the landing gear on neither of these sets is particularly perfect. On the 2021 version, you can knock the set down just like that. It's really unfortunate, but the three-point landing gear just didn't do the trick. 2015 did have some stronger landing gear. It had much bigger base. You can see you would think it'd be more balanced, but unfortunately, it has an issue, just like in 2021 still has an issue, uh, where if you like hit the model just slightly, it can fall back really easily. And you'd say, well, you have the landing gear built wrong. Dude, I've checked this landing gear a hundred times. I'm pretty sure it's not built wrong at this point. I have looked back time and time again in the instruction model. And if you put the landing gear back, well, that's not how it's supposed to be when it's actually landed, right? Like it works. It's a little bit more balanced like this, but you can still have it fall forward like that. So it is an equally big problem on both sets with the landing gear where it just is not super stable. And that is an issue that we don't have on the earlier models, but that's the real detractor for both these models to me, other than the chin on the 2021 version, which is a whole nother story in and of itself. It just has a relatively poor design there. But overall, 2015, 
2019, definitely the better design. 2021, second best design out of the Imperial shuttles. Now let's talk value and a quick refresher at their respective inflation adjusted prices. 2001 retailed for $50, 2005 retailed for 65, 2015 at $110 and 2021 at $70. I think it's pretty obvious the 2001 set, it's not a very good value at 50 bucks compared to everything else. I mean, even this one at 70 has such a better build versus the 50 there. And then if you look at this one for $15 more than 2001, you're gonna tell me you get six more minifigures plus, Plus the extra builds. It's just an incredible difference in value there. 2001 worst value. 2005, I think, is the best value because if you compare this for 65 versus this for 110, you call it, you know, roughly three fifths the price. And that is still a pretty dang good drop in quality as far as the build goes versus the value of all the extra minifigs, the builds, and still getting a decent shuttle, I suppose, depending on your opinion on that shuttle. So I think that's pretty fair there. I think the 2015 shuttle is going to be the second best value, though, at 110. Ten dollars. You're getting such a behemoth of a model compared to 2021, which is scaled down, and it's only forty dollars more. Plus, you get way better minifigures, in my opinion. And just generally, like if you're gonna spend forty dollars more, you're getting a better set. Like it's worth the extra forty bucks comparatively. Obviously, nowadays you're gonna be paying about two hundred dollars sealed on eBay or Bricklink if you want to buy this 2015 model. But I also think that's worth it. I think if you're going in looking to buy a new Imperial shuttle, it's worth the extra money to just have the good one versus the one that's not so good. If if you can afford it. If not, no big deal. You're not going to hate the new shuttle, but it's just worth the extra money to get the cooler thing for me personally. Real quick before I hop into my opinion, this is our score sheet at the moment. So it's a pretty tight race outside of the 2001 version of the set, which doesn't really have a chance at this point because we're not playing golf. You really thought I'd make a whole Imperial Shuttle comparison video and not bring out my favorite Lego Star Wars set of all time, the UCS Imperial Shuttle. Now, obviously, it doesn't really compare with the smaller models. That's why it's not part of the video properly, but I thought I'd put it in here while I talk about my opinion on these sets. So, from left to right, again, 2001, it was it's a fine set, but, you know, just in the whole scheme of things, it's just not very good. And, you know, with those yellow figures, the old gray color, just the rudimentary design, it's just the worst set in my opinion it gets one point it's just not that good it's unfortunate but that's the way it is 2005 maybe perhaps somewhat influenced by that beautiful box art and the fact that it's just got so many dang cool minifigures is the second best imperial shuttle they've released at least of the playset versions of course we're not counting this one here so yeah very nice set very cool figure selection and obviously the shuttle build itself is very rudimentary like the original one but the figures and the box art and stuff like that i think makes up for it so that's getting one point that's getting three points the set that's getting Getting two points is the 2021 shuttle. In my opinion, this is the second worst shuttle or third best shuttle, however you want to spin it. Um, it's just not that good looking on the chin. The minifigures definitely disappoint, but overall it does have some positive attributes to the model that I do like, and it definitely has to get credit for that. So I think it's good. I think it's better than that. I would rather have this than that, but I wouldn't rather have that than either of those two, if that makes any sense. But of course the king here, <laughs> maybe we'll forget about that for a second, but out of the place is the 2015 model. It's just so freaking good comparatively. I kind of doubt, and that's unless they make another UCS version, which is entirely possible, but I definitely doubt they'll ever make anything in the play scale that even touches what 2015 did so right with size, price, minifigures, playability, design, like it had everything. And unfortunately, 2021 was a big step back, but yeah, four points to 2015. And just next to that massive 2010 shuttle, I think it's pretty cool to see all the baby shuttles essentially lined up there. It's just such a cool set. And that leaves us here with our final scores and the worst set with only five points as low as you can go. 2001, the second worst set with 11 points, 2021, and then tied for first, we have the 2005 and 2015 models set 10 years apart, obviously. But I did decide that the 2015 model should get the nod because it did win my opinion category and most of this opinion anyway. So 2015 going to take home the crown as far as best Imperial shuttle play set. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, which Imperial shuttle would you buy or are you going to buy having watched this video? Now I'm kind of curious what you guys are thinking down there. Make sure you leave a like down in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. And like I said earlier, you can check out more Lego Star Wars comparisons on the end screen now.